Semiconductor technologies are one of the biggest advancements in recent human history. From powering phones to cars to almost every other aspect of our lives, semiconductors are at the heart of our diverse landscape of technologies. In 1965, Gordon Moore predicted the doubling of the number of transistors per microchip about every two years, a trend that would hold true for many decades and would usher in the digital century. And Moore was right. Or was he? The constant demand for more powerful chips drove semiconductors to the limit of the physically possible, a limit constantly advanced by cutting-edge science. In a world that gets more digitized by the minute, silicon-based technologies can no longer keep up with demand. Semiconductor development is closely tied to fundamental research that is done here at PDI. The heart of semiconductor research here at PDI is molecular beam epitaxy. This chamber is used to grow semiconductor crystals from a wide array of materials, forming different novel compounds and structures. A diverse array of pumps guarantees ultra-high vacuum conditions in the chamber with fewer particles than in the vacuum of space around the International Space Station. Streams of atoms are released from individual cells with elements of the highest purity. Through precise control of these conditions and with finely crafted recipes, it is possible to create devices with hundreds of different layers. Okay, now the sample is in the chamber, so I will now place the sample in the carousel. We heat this material up and then it will evaporate into the chamber and the stream of atoms is placed onto the sample and because the sample is heated, the atoms will move around a little bit there and then form into a new crystal layer. And this is how we grow a new semiconductor. The transmission electron microscope uses a beam of electrons to image even the smallest of structures. With magnifications up to 100 million times, the TEM can measure lattices with atomic resolution. In situ methods allow us to see the growth reversal processes, which give insight to the formation of individual layers, atoms and structures. The scanning tunneling microscope uses an atomically sharp tip and quantum tunneling effect to study semiconductor surfaces with atomic resolution. Special techniques even allow for the manipulation of individual atoms and their arrangement into particular shapes. Photoluminescent spectroscopy reveals the inner workings of the semiconductor, such as carrier densities, band formations and a zoo of quasi-particles like excitons and polaritons. The excitation of the semiconductor with acoustic waves shows interactions of photons and phonons in their atomic lattice and their propagation throughout the structure. In the lithography lab, these materials are processed further and turned into devices. With the help of different types of masks, the semiconductors can be deliberately exposed to a variety of etchants and special coatings. In the XRD lab, reflection of X-rays on semiconductor crystals is studied. The reflections give insight into thicknesses of the grown layers and the particular arrangement of their crystal structure. So on the right side, we have the, the X-ray copper source where we shoot electrons onto copper and then it emits the special wavelengths for copper. And this will be reflected from our sample into our detector. And from that, it will gain information about the crystal structure. The complexity of our processes are an essential part of the wildly diverse scientific landscape. We strive to share our research in as many ways as possible as publications, with our collaborators, in conferences, in outreach events, and with you.